people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Deadly explosions outside Kabul airport kill dozens Islamic State claims responsibility. Daesh and Lashkar terrorists returning to POK from Afghanistan. And Indian forces step up offensive against park back terrorism in Kashmir. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan where successive suicide bombs striking Kabul airport killed more than 100 people including US troops. The explosions claimed by Islamic State ripped through the crowds just hours after Western governments had warned off an imminent attack and told their people to stay away from the airport. For American forces, the attacks were a gruesome coda to almost 20 years of warfare in Afghanistan, one of their heaviest losses just days before they are set to leave the country, a report. Two suicide bombers and gunmen attacked crowds of Afghans flocking to Kabul's airport, transforming a scene of desperation into one of horror. In back-to-back -back explosions, at least 90 Afghans and 13 US troops were killed. The bombs were set off near a crowd of families at the airport gates who were desperately hoping to make one of the last evacuation flights out. Islamic State claimed responsibility for the blasts in a statement and said one of its bombers had targeted translators and collaborators with the American army. Video shot by Afghan journalists showed dozens of bodies strewn around a canal on the edge of the airport. Western officials had warned of a major attack, urging people to leave the airport, but that advice went largely unheeded by Afghans desperate to escape the country. However, the question arises that how suicide bombers managed to reach the American army at Barron Camp near Kabul airport. Could more have been done to protect the perimeter of Kabul airport and prevent suicide bombers approaching American forces and innocent Afghan civilians? This attack also raises the question over Taliban's capabilities to maintain peace and stability in the region. Everybody knew that uh, a bomb blast is going to take place. Americans were warning, and, uh, and yet it has taken place. It means, number one, you know, the Taliban has failed to uh, secure s security of that uh, 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 airport, you know. One thing has been confirmed, you know. Uh, Taliban is not capable of providing c peace, stability, and security. That has now been confirmed, you know. And uh, they're finding difficulty even in forming the so-called inclusive government, you know. And uh, it's a force, Taliban, you know, they know how to, excuse me, how to create terror. But they don't know how to maintain peace and stability. ISISK, or Islamic State Khurasan province, which has claimed the attacks, is the regional affiliate of ISIS that is active in Afghanistan and Pakistan. It is the most extreme and violent of all the jihadist terror group in Afghanistan. 
It recruits from both Afghan and Pakistani jihadists, especially defecting members of the Afghan Taliban, who don't see their own organization as extreme enough. Islamic State had been blamed for some of the worst atrocities in Afghanistan, targeting girls' schools, hospitals, and even a maternity ward, where they reportedly shot dead pregnant women and infants. Quite possible, you know, the Taliban may be behind this blast, and uh, there may be a, uh, uh, ISS may be blamed because uh, Taliban, especially within the Taliban, the Haqqani network maintains very close ties with the uh, with the ISS Khorasan. The head of ISS Khorasan is basically earlier he was he was with the Haqqani network. So most of the ISS uh, uh, in Afghanistan is uh, joined by the Haqqani network or other faction of Taliban. So they were the, earlier they were part of Taliban, now they have joined. So they have clued next, and, and we have also information, everybody knows. While Islamic State and the Taliban are hardline Sunni Islamist militants and claim to be the true flag bearers of jihad, they are sworn enemies who differ on minute details of religion and strategy. Analysts say that the rivalry between the both groups will continue after the last American troops leave, which is a threat to Afghanistan evacuation. However, according to some researchers, there are strong links between ISISK and the Haqqani network, which in turn is closely linked to the Taliban. The attacks on Hamid Karzai International Airport, the main source of hope for those trying to escape the city, has left many Afghans fleeing desperate. A fog of uncertainty looms over Afghanistan, and people are now struck between two brutal and violent forces. Afghanistan has been affected by decades of never-ending conflict. And now, when the Taliban has taken over the water nation, Afghans fear they have been abandoned, and the women in particular are the most at danger. The Taliban return is catastrophic for them. To talk more on this, we are now joined by Afghanistan's biggest pop star and also a social activist, Ariana Saeed, who had to leave her country after the Taliban's takeover. Ariana, how do you see the future of Afghan women under the Taliban's reign? For me, uh, I, I feel you know grateful that I'm out of the country right now, but, but then my, my heart is going out for those millions of people who are left behind in Afghanistan, especially, especially the women of Afghanistan. And what they went through through the Taliban regime 20 years ago was just crucial. It was just unbelievable. And now we are back to the same point where we were 20 years ago, and it's unbelievable. I, I really am really worried, really concerned for all those women who are going to be stuck in their, inside their houses once again, and they're not going to be given their basic rights, which is, which is just just as near as like going out, you know, on the road, they cannot even do that. Uh, they have to have a male, you know, uh, person with them and they cannot go to school and, and study and stuff like that. So I feel really bad for them. I, the future, I cannot say anything right now, but this for sure, I know that if Afghanistan is really going to be left in the hands of Taliban, there is no future for Afghan women. So what is your appeal to the Western world? You know, the liberal and democratic society. What do you expect from them? You know, I'm really disappointed to begin with. I'm very disappointed that they left Afghanistan uh, alone, you know, just like that. Uh, and, and Taliban, uh, you know, took over the entire Afghanistan within a span of few days. It's unbelievable to me. My hope is for the international community to not forget about Afghanistan and to not forget about the Afghan nation because it's not their fault. You know, they're living in misery right now and, and millions of people in Afghanistan, including children and women, they don't deserve what they're going through right now. And I hope that they can sit down and they can find a solution to bring peace in Afghanistan. If we talk about the current situation of Afghanistan, who do you blame for the ongoing crisis? I personally believe that we are dealing with all these major issues in Afghanistan because of Pakistan. I mean, Taliban, by now, all of us, we know that Taliban are being funded by Pakistan. They're being, uh, you know, uh, instructed by Pakistan. Uh, their bases are in Pakistan. This is where they get trained. I, I blame Pakistan because 
it's not you, you know it's it's by now over the years we've seen you know videos we've seen evidence we have evidence that pakistan is behind you know uh, empowering taliban absolutely every time our government uh, you know would catch a talib they would see the identification and it would be a pakistani person you know so it, it's very obvious that that they, it's them and i do blame them and i hope that they back off and they don't interfere uh, in, in the politics in afghanistan anymore thank you so much for joining us thank you so much for having me Pakistan's nexus with the Taliban is quite old and its assistance to the insurgent group was one of the causes of the US failure in Afghanistan. Pakistan denies helping the group militarily, but the evidence is confirmed that logistical, technical and financial support for the Taliban continues to emanate from the country. Islamabad's stand on Taliban has been exposed yet again with banned terror groups Jesh e Mohammed and Lashkar e Taiba's terrorists reaching Pakistan occupied Kashmir from Afghanistan under the watch of the country's notorious inter services intelligence a report After months of fighting along with the Taliban terrorists of the band Lashkar e Taiba and Jesh e Mohammed are now heading back home Few batches of terrorists have already started reaching their training camps in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. In videos out in the public domain, these terrorists are shown taking out victory rallies. Apart from street demos, celebratory firing in various places such as Abbaspur, Hajira and Sensa near the line of control is becoming a routine. These dreaded terrorists were sent to fight along with the Taliban on the instruction of the ISI and Pakistan army. Since it is mission accomplished time, they are now coming back home with a renewed focus on Kashmir. Dozens of uh, Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir based Taliban who had gone to Afghanistan on the uh, on the instructions of ISI and Pakistan army to fight alongside the Taliban have started to return to Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir and yesterday dozens of these Taliban uh, youths have arrived in Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir especially in Abbaspur in uh, Hajira in Sensa district and they are terrorizing uh, the local population by uh, uh, establishing roadblocks and checking people and asking them for their id cards and stuff like that a large number of these terrorists are from punjab of pakistan who were dispatched by the army after a short stint of training at camps run by different terror organizations in kandahar helmand and other places in afghanistan these groups bearing the tag of terror units were seen fighting along with the taliban After coming back they now want to establish a Taliban like rule in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. They are threatening the people there and asking them to follow Sharia laws. These terrorists who came after learning cruelty from the Taliban are now only a few kilometers away from the borders of India which is certainly a cause of concern for New Delhi. There are reports that Pakistan trained terrorists are returning to India from Pakistan occupied Kashmir there could be any number from 250 to 300 however it must be noted that the counter infiltration grid which is existing today in Jammu and Kashmir is one of the tightest of ever times there is a strong security presence on the line of control all along there are certainly some gaps which were there earlier which have been well covered so that infiltration into jammu and kashmir is going to be very very difficult terror camps in pakistan occupied kashmir have been used for decades for fomenting an anti india sentiment in kashmir active camps in pok and such facilities are used for training and subsequently infiltration into jammu and kashmir Multiple terror teams comprising terrorists from Jaish e Mohammed, Lashkar e Taiba and Hizbul Mujahideen have been regularly camping in various forward areas of Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Now, Pakistan can shift these terror training camps of Jaish and Lashkar from POK to Afghanistan for avoiding international scrutiny and can claim that it has no role in violence in Kashmir. 
Moreover, Pakistan may now ask the Taliban to divert some of its ranks to Jammu and Kashmir for reviving terror operations. As per the latest intelligence input, the arms that have fallen into the Taliban's hands are also being diverted to JAM and LAT. It is most likely that Pakistan army and terrorist groups will try to smuggle these American weapons into India to create unrest in Kashmir. A lot of these arms have been already handed over to Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar e Taiba. It is very apparent that these two groups will try to push in these arms into Jammu and Kashmir. Because as we know, presently the status of level of arms which are available in Jammu and Kashmir is very low. And to put in these arms, a number of attempts at infiltration will be tried. A number of other methods such as dropping by drones, transportation through various uh, smuggling channels, etc., etc. will be attempted. Security forces are already aware of it and they are alert and I'm sure they'll be able to neutralize it. Recently, India had told the UN Security Council that terror groups like the LAT and JEM continue to operate in Pakistan with both impunity and encouragement. The world is now watching what is happening in POK. Pakistan-sponsored terrorism has crossed all limits. Hence, the international community urgently needs to take certain concrete diplomatic steps against Pakistan. While Pakistan is trying hard to revive violence in Kashmir, India is committed to fighting all their tricks to stop its western neighbor from inciting terror in the valley. The Indian security forces, despite suffering losses, managed to foil all its devious agendas. Once again, continuing with the spate of encounters that have taken place recently in the valley, Indian security forces eliminated at least five terrorists, including two top commanders in Kashmir, Sopor and Srinagar districts. A counter-terrorism offensive aimed at wiping out park back terrorists from Jammu and Kashmir has gained fresh momentum with the killing of as many as five terrorists in just two days, including two top commanders of the Resistance Front, an outfit affiliated with park back lashkar e -Taiba. The terrorists Muhammad Abbas Sheikh and Saqib Manzoor Dar were top LET commanders and were also responsible for carrying out numerous attacks on civilians, lawmakers and security personnel. Their list of crimes is never ending. One of the oldest terrorists in the valley who joined their ranks in 1996 and was the chief of the resistance front, Abbas Sheikh, was actively motivating youth to join terror ranks. He was previously associated with the Hezbollah Mujahideen and later took over the TRF. His killing is a big success as it deals a blow not only to the capabilities of the TRF but to the ideology of the outfit as well. As we all know, the police are behind Abbas Sheikh and Saki Manjur. Because these are two terrorists who have survived the militancy and terrorism. And there were five terrorists who joined in this event. Last month, two terrorists were killed. Today, Abbas Sheikh and Saki Manjur were killed. Abbas Sheikh was the chief of the TRF. But in reality, Saki Manjur and Saki Manjur were both in the reality. Just a day before the killing of Saqib and Abbas Sheikh, three more terrorists, all belonging to the resistance front, were killed in an overnight gunfight in North Kashmir, Supor. Unlike the Fidain attacks and other armed strikes on the security forces by traditional terror groups like Lashkar, Jaish and Hezbul Mujahideen, TRF has concentrated mainly on soft targets like local party leaders and businessmen, apparently to generate a wave of fear among civilians after the abrogation of Article 370 in 2019. TRF has emerged as a dreaded terror group due to its audacious high-profile assassinations and the number of its sleeper cells and overground workers. Meanwhile, to demoralize the pro-democracy elements in the valley, other park back terror groups are also targeting those who are willing to represent people through democratic and constitutional ways. Recently, Indian security forces eliminated 
three terrorists belonging to Jashi Muhammad. One of them was responsible for the killing of municipal councillor and a Kashmiri Pandit, Rakesh Pandita. Kalarat me uh, Avantipur police ko information mila tha ki Jesh ka a group uh, Tarsar Marsar ki general area me chipa hua army uh, 42 R para aur police ke kuch rep saath operation launch ki aur uh, early morning firing shuru hua jisme Jesh Mohammad ke teen terrorist maare gaye. एक पहचान हो गया है वकील साहब है ये वही वकील साहब है जिसको हम लोग कुछ दिन पहले एक टॉप 10 का लिस्ट जारी किए थे जो मैं मेरा टॉप 10 टारगेट है उसमें वकील साहब भी था जेस का और जो बीजेपी के लीडर थे राकेश पनीता उसके किनलिंग में इन्वॉल्व थे मोर ओवर पाकिस्तान्स आईएसआई इज नाउ रिजॉर्टिंग टू यूज ऑफ ड्रोन्स टू इनफिल्ट्रेट वेपन्स एंड ड्रग्स इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर after the drone blast at Jammu Air Force Station in June this year, the number of drone sightings has gone up drastically as several drones have been spotted near the international border in Kashmir in recent days. However, India is effectively thwarting all its devious agendas. Last week too, the border security force fired at a flying object along the Indo-Pak international border in Arnia sector of Jammu district. सुबह साढ़े पांच छह बजे के करीब पाकिस्तान के इधर ड्रोन आया था जो हम हमारी बीएसएफ ने थोड़े से ड्रोन फायर किया फिर उसी समय वापस चला गया अब थोड़ा सा सर्च ऑपरेशन चल रहा है मूवमेंट काफी चल रही है पाकिस्तान की छोटी छोटी शर्तें ही करता रहता है इससे उसको को, कोई फायदा होने वाला नहीं है हमारी बीएसएफ इतनी कमजोर नहीं है कि ऐसे बच्चों जैसे ड्रोन भेजकर वापस ले जाना इससे हमें कोई फर्क पड़ने वाला नहीं है टू कीप इट्स टेरर मशीन रनिंग पाकिस्तान हैज बीन यूजिंग नारकोटिक्स एज अ मेजर फाइनेंसिंग टूल Several drug smuggling attempts in Kashmir, Punjab and Rajasthan have been thwarted in recent days. Once again, the security forces in Punjab foiled a major bid to smuggle drugs from Pakistan and recovered 39 packets of heroin weighing almost 41 kg and estimated at about 200 crore rupees in the international market. While Pakistan has been pushing trained terrorists into Indian territory, and also deadly arms and ammunition. Besides fake currency, narcotics are being pumped into India to reach Indian markets like Punjab, Delhi, Mumbai to generate money for terror operations and recruitment. It has emerged as a profitable venture for terrorist organizations who have suffered in the recent past due to freezing of their bank accounts and dismantling of Hawala money laundering networks. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.